and welcome to Vox Markets. I am John Human, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Neil Herbert, the Executive Chairman of Atlantic Lithium. W welcome, Neil. Thank you for having me here today. No problem at all. Um, so yeah, it's been uh, a fantastic year uh, in the main for uh, for Atlantic um, as you head towards developing the first lithium project uh, in Ghana, um, and we're going to look back at some of the some of the highlights of that year. Um, so perhaps first of all, give us a, a feel for for what you're 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 trying to achieve um, in respect of the, the the broader lithium market, where you fit into to that whole thing. It is a it is a hot market given that the the, uh, the the huge amounts of lithium that are going to be required required for, uh, for the electric electrification of transport in particular? Yeah, very much so. So if you look at the sector as a whole, and there are some good estimates out there of the number of new mines required for the next decade, and I won't dwell on it, but it's I've seen estimates from 59 new mines to 72 new mines, and, and everybody who, who works with the industry knows the average time it takes to get a mine to production is about 10 years. So fortunately for us, we're very advanced in that. Um, lithium prices have been eye-watering high. Uh, last year, I think the last auction I saw was over eight thousand seven hundred dollars a ton. Um, you know, that's way above the the, the long term expectations of the banks. Although what I'm seeing with the banks is, as the price continues to be high, but unsurprisingly, they're lifting their long term estimates. And so, where we seem to be sitting is expectation of long term prices would be about one thousand five hundred dollars a ton uh, going forward into the into the longer term. Um, obviously, they may be significantly higher in the shorter term. To put that in context, what we're doing with Atlantic with the Awoya project in Ghana, um, this is described by analysts as the best in class project. And what that really means is we have a very low OPEX, very low CAPEX project. So for us, we're looking at our P feasibility numbers. Previously, we had costs at under $300, uh, operating costs of under $300 in the context of a price of one thousand five hundred dollars, which is the the long term price. That's a magnificent, uh, a magnificent economic proposition. Mm, absolutely. Um. So, so let's go back to the start of the year. Um. You, you began the year with uh, with continued drilling at, at added wire. Um. Uh, as part of the the pre feasibility study. So that's been delivered now. Can you can you give us a feel for um for what the the, the pre feasibility study uh, found uh, the and the economics behind the project? Indeed. So I think two sides to this is on the exploration side, obviously we, we came into the year with a resource of about 20 million. Um, and then uh, later in the year, we completed a, an uplift in the resource to over 30 million tons. So that's a, over a 50% increase. Um, we've then done another 47,000 meters of drilling, uh, which we've been delivering results to the market. The last section of which the last 10,000 meters or so was put out into the public today. Um, that particularly just highlights, if you like, that these are satellite deposits around the Emea, uh, Awoya main deposit, which again showing consistently good results, which is a, a very attractive thing. Um, but what the, the pre-feasibility study did, and as I say, when it, the highlights of why it is best in class, um, the project has uh, an IRR of 100, sorry, 224%. Um, obviously, normally when we're working in mining projects, we're looking for something like 30, 30 something percent IRR. So 224% is magnificent. Um, as I mentioned previously, the OPEX uh, per ton is, is under $300 in that study. So obviously that's exceptional against the current price, which is many thousands of dollars. Um, and as a result of which the payback period is, is under 20 weeks. You're looking at a, a, a post-tax NPV of 1.3 billion, um, our revenues of 4.84 billion. Um, all these numbers are, are really quite, quite a very impressive numbers. And against peers, it stands up very well. But obviously, we're now moving on to the next stage, which is to deliver the definitive feasibility study, and indeed, importantly, the the updated resource statement from these this 47,000 meters of drilling that we just completed, which people can expect around the end of this month. So you'll see a bigger resource. And again, that will reflect into the into the definitive feasibility study that we're doing. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of activity uh, as, uh, as today's announcement. Um... Uh, demonstrates. Um, so, so you mentioned the project is best in class, um, and that's as you say based on uh, the opex and the capex. What, why, what makes this a, a low opex, low capex project? Yeah, I always say this is nature's gift. <laughs> um, the project itself it, it is a straightforward mining proposition, and then it's a good location. So, a good location in that you know we have available power at site. The site is actually located on the main highway to the main mining port in Ghana. Ghana is a good mining jurisdiction, so it has very good infrastructure. Um, 
So all of this adds up. So we have, I think it's uh, 140 kilometers to the site. The mineralization itself is full spodumene. So most of the African projects that you'll see, in fact, I think this about every project that, that, that I've seen has been a mix of minerals. And so the most desirable is spodumene. So this is what you get best results from. A result of which we have a very simple process chart. So we effectively have to run a gravity circuit. Um, and that is really as far as we take the product before shipping. So that's a, a very straightforward operation. So that makes for low capex and low opex and uh, a relatively small site size and a, and a small environmental impact. Indeed, to the extent that we're drawing power, we can draw from uh, draw from the national grid, and that that's provided for by by hydropower. So it's a it's a very attractive project. Mm, and my understanding is that um, you've got good access to to deep water port facilities there as well, which I guess makes a huge difference. Yeah, so Takarati um, uh, recently underwent an expansion, so we actually have to do very little in terms of, of the port capacity. It's there all day and waiting for us. Obviously, we have to do some loading facilities, et cetera, but it's, it's, it's there. It's nothing major for us to have to do, which is, mm -hmm. which is one of the nice things about Ghana. What I always say about Ghana is obviously it's a very established mining jurisdiction, long history, one of the longest in Africa. Um, as a result of which you've got uh, good infrastructure and good staff. So we are overwhelmingly a Ghanaian company. Uh, we have a lot of highly experienced staff working with us. Um, and one of the nice things about the project is most of the projects, uh, our gold projects are in the interior. So what we find is, is that when we're looking for people because we're relatively close to the coast and the capital, um, people are highly attracted to, to working with us. So we get sort of the, the pick of the, the pick of the people, the pick of the people. And indeed in, in Ghana, you've got a lot of very, highly qualified people we, we often find them working in in australia and the states when you're when you're traveling mm -hmm. uh, the other thing i guess that, that really helps you uh with your engagement with with uh with the Ghanaian authorities is, is your your approach to uh community engagement and uh and the environment so, so what, what are you doing on that front that, that again you know really sort of makes your project attractive to to, to the authorities in ghana so I think one of the, the, the attractive things is obviously the, the government itself has, has a long history of, of gold mining um, and always looking to diversify in terms of its portfolio of minerals, obviously, to sort of bulk up the mining sector in country. So we've been very welcome in terms of we'll be the first lithium mine. Um, lithium in terms of, of processing, and particularly this project, is, is very straightforward. So gold mining itself can have some more difficult, more complicated environmental aspects to it. This doesn't have that. Um, it's just a really nice, simple project on that side. In terms of the local community, you know, we make sure that we part of the project is reserved for, for community for community projects. Uh, part of the, the revenues will be reserved for that. Um, and it's just a it is a very small footprint, so we're not having to move large numbers of people. There's a, there's a few households that we have to move, but it's a relatively small number of people. So not really a problem. We've been very careful to be heavily engaged locally from the start of the project, and we've had very good relationship. Uh, across the board in Ghana. Mm. I, I mean, it sounds like it's a very important project for, for Ghana itself. Um, and, and there were some rumours floating around earlier in the year that uh, the, the, the country's minerals uh, income investment fund was uh, was uh, was looking to, to invest in you. Is, is, is there any substance yeah. to that? Has it become to, come to anything? Um, yes, it is. I mean, and, uh, and people asked me about this at the, <laughs> the end of last year. And, and the reality is it's because it is a sovereign wealth fund. They, they obviously have a very high bar in terms of due diligence that they have to work through. They do internal review, and then they have an independent external review, etc. Um, my understanding is they've now uh, uh, completed that process. I'm actually down in Ghana before the end of the month, and we'll be seeing them. Um, my expectation is that they will be coming in. Um, we, and I think very clear from our side, that they're most welcome. Uh, this would be an important part of you like our local content to what we're doing in Ghana, having them come in at the, the Atlantic lithium level, at the top coat uh, level. So um, very much look forward to having them on board. As I said before, we, with the exception of, of taking money at, at this stage to have them as investors in Atlantic lithium, uh, we're not looking to raise any further funds at this point in time. So it's um, it would be it would be a very good thing. I hope that in the month of February we'll we'll conclude that. Mm. I mean, you mentioned your, 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 you, you don't require further funding. I guess that was helped by the, uh, the, uh, the, the Australian listing that you, uh, you completed this year. Indeed, we, we, we did. We raised a little bit of money. I mean, most of the shares that went down into the listing last year um, actually came from uh, were existing shares. They were, uh, unfortunately, our founder died in mm. the, early on in the year, Vincent Muscoli, which was a huge shock, but you know, something that we've all worked to overcome. In fact, the whole team, I think, has has come pulled together to, to make sure that we can bring the mine to production. Um, 
but the the key really to to funding was we we entered into an arrangement with Piedmont Lithium, which, as uh, no doubt some of the listeners will know, is a, a North American company which is planning to build two hydroxide plants. So they came into the project and they're earning into 50% and they, at the project level, and they provide over $100 million in funding, 70 million of which is reserved for, for CapEx. After 70 million, we, we share the, the cost 50-50 with them. So um, on a $125 million CapEx estimate, which is what we had in the pre-feasibility study, um, that would mean that we would be, what, 27 and a half million uh, required to raise. Uh, which is the sort of order of magnitude that you would expect the the Ghanaian sovereign wealth fund to come in to make an investment. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so in essence, to get this project to production, you you are fully funded. We're there. Yes. I mean, what's that? What that stage is done. I mean, if for any reason the Ghanaian sovereign wealth fund didn't want to invest, I mean, the obvious thing for us to do is actually to take on debt at this stage because the project is that advanced. We could do so in association with the offtake. So half of the offtake is destined for the hydroxide plants of. Piedmont Lithium, the other 50% is currently free and clear. And there's a lot of people scrabbling for that supply at this moment in time. So we could we could maximize the value of that to ensure we also got some debt financing if we needed it. Mm-hmm. No, good, good position to be in. So so first production, as I understand it, is targeted for Q324, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Is that is that still the, uh, the, the target date? Very much the plan. So in terms of um, key dates for this year, Obviously, we, we did that the that drill program, which we just put the last set of results out on. We're consolidating those into a new resource statement. Um, and as I think I said last year, in order of magnitude, we'd expect the, the overall resize size to grow to about 35 million tons or so. Um, and within that, equally importantly, and perhaps even more importantly, we, we do, uh, if you like, a more narrowly spaced drilling, which brings it into a higher category so we can bring it into our mind plan for the definitive feasibility study. So, you know, key dates to watch for um, at the end of this month, look forward to seeing that mineral resource statement. Um, if the Ghanaians are going to invest, I imagine we'll see that by mid this quarter. Um, and then next quarter, uh, we will we'll complete the definitive feasibility study. So that's the, the, uh, the, the final analysis of how we're going to take this to, to production. Obviously, the increased resource uh, statement that we, we imagine we'll be putting out before the end of this month. Uh, will play into that because that will actually make for uh, either one increased production levels and or a longer mine life. Mm. So, so um, as part of getting to that, um, you, you know, you hit some key milestones last year in terms of sort of engineering partners uh, and the application for a mining license and the appointment of a, a chief operating officer, which seems like a real statement of intent. Intent. Can you talk us through, you know, what what what's been going on to 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 get this project into production? Yeah, absolutely. So, obviously, the the the, uh, the the pre-fees was the real kickoff for us, and we put in the mining license application at that time. So there's a whole series of permits, including the mining license that you have to get, which is, you know, I think it's about three dozen permits, uh, permits, licenses, etc. But the big one being the mining license itself. So that application went in after the, the fees, but the, the uh, pre-feasibility study was delivered. Um, actually, the government quite promptly came back with a series of very detailed questions upon that study. Uh, and we have replied to that in, in equal detail to make sure that they, we've addressed all the points that they've brought up. So we're feeling very good about that at the moment. Um, and the underlying individual studies are all work streams are being worked in through our team. Um, in terms of the team itself, obviously, we have a transformation going on. And as you rightly point out, they, we brought in a COO and we brought in a qualified mining engineer who has actually run uh, a lithium operation, which is similar to what we are expecting to be producing. So we have now have that expertise in-house. But indeed, widening the team and, and, and adding to the team, obviously, we have a very successful exploration team led by our CEO, Len Koff. What we're now moving on to is obviously having a mining team and a build team to deliver the project on a timely basis. So uh, in terms of that, what we would hope to see is that probably next quarter, we would get ministerial approval for the mining license. And then hopefully by around the end of the third quarter, we would actually have a parliamentary ratification of the mining license. Uh, with together all the other part, the licenses and permits that are required to operate. So by the end of the year, what we'd like to see is license to operate effectively and to break ground on the project around the year end. Mm, fantastic. And am I right in thinking that that there is a lot left to be explored in the portfolio in Ghana? It is. So we've actually, I think it's, we've worked on something like 2% of the portfolio. Um, there are areas, and I think this, there's this work that's been done on, on the resource um, statement, this 47,000 
uh, meters of drilling that we've done reflects very well the, the potential we've had and the results today with some of the satellite deposits around the warrior. Um, we believe that, that there's a lot more potential within it. And we've often talked and very speculatively that we think the potential is again to double or triple the resource from the 30 billion that we had at the middle of last year. Um, so that's, that's, that's long-term potential. It's not something that we, we're planning to work on now because obviously the key thing here is taking the project to cash flow. But in the meantime, what we'll be looking at this year is uh, we have areas where we can continue to work, but we have surface expression of the pegmatite, so you can actually see the matte surface so you know where you need to work, but also uh, bringing in some cutting edge technology to look at where those pegmatites might be buried, um, where they're not obvious at surface. So uh, I know the team is busy working on that at the moment, so we, we should have some news about what we're doing on that side later in the year as well. Mm, no, but it's it's uh, it's been, I say, a year of uh, of tremendous progress, and uh, it sounds like there's a, a lot more to come in uh, 2023. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us, Neil. It's um, been really, really fascinating. Thank you very much for having me. No problem.